special kind of array available in PHP called an associative array. And um, what it lets me do is instead of specifying um, the values in the array using numeric indexes, I can actually use um, keys that have like more meaning or, or uh, information in them. So for example, if I wanted to store hex codes, um, it probably makes sense to s tell what the color is as the index and then to uh, save what's in there. So here's my value for red. I've given the index the value red and the value um, F00. So these are kind of like key value pairs. So let me put another one in here. Let's do green. Let's say that's equal to 0, F0. And I've got this line ready down here to show you that you can print this out. And let's see what it gives us. So I've got in here at the index called red, F00, and at the index called green, 0, F0. So it lets me give my code a little bit more meaning. Um, this is automatically going to happen when you process information that's sent through a form. Also, it's going to pick up um, key values off of the names of the items on your form. So that's the first way I can create it. The second way I can create it is um, similar to how you can preload a regular old array. And here's what it looks like. It's the word array. And I'm going to actually hit... Um, down to the next line so it's more obvious what I'm doing. So here I can put um, the values in. So here's my uh, F00 and a comma. Then I can do green. And notice I have this little arrow notation. Um, and that's how you specify the p value that goes with the key. Um, blue. And then when I'm done, I close off the parentheses and put a semicolon, and this should show me all three are in there. Yeah, there they are. So I can preload an associative array with sets of key and value pairs um, with this sort of syntax. Um, so I can run a loop to visit all these guys, just like I could with a regular array. Um, the syntax is a little different. Um, typically, I want to visit all of them, so for each loop is a nice option. So now I'm going to visit all my colors. And I have two things, right? I don't have just one thing. So I'm going to visit the color itself. Um, and I'm going to visit the hex code that comes out. Um, so if I am in here and I'm specifying stuff, this guy is the temporary variable that's going to hold the actual key, the name of the color. And this guy is the temporary variable that's going to hold the actual hex code. Um, that's the value from the array. So let's see, I should be able to print out, let's do this as a list. Uh, so this will be col. Let's say code is hex code. I'm going to tack the end of my list on. Oops. All right. Let's check a thing in front of this. this off. So now it should to know, tell me each color and its hex code. Let's see if I don't have any syntax errors. So red's code is hashtag F00, green's code is etc. Um, and if I want a space, I can stick a space right here and that should look a little bit nicer. Yeah. So I can use a for each loop to visit all these guys. Um, maybe I want to make sure that these things are uniform, so there are some functions that I can use on associative arrays. So, for example, maybe I want all my color names to be uppercase, and here's what that looks like. Array, change, key, oops, key, case, uh, let's work on colors, and I want to make it case upper. So now when I print these out, all the color names should be uppercase. Okay, um, there's also case lower, which does the opposite. Um, let me mess with one of these so that you can see that, so that's random. Um, this is important if you're letting the user do some input that might set these and they could end up being totally wonky um, and you want to control them. Um, it's a nice little way to clean that up and make sure that you are in control of what's happening. Okay, um, yeah, so that's associative arrays.